do anything as relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about it, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you, though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mm. What, what is that? No comment. You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? You're not going to answer how taxpayer dollars are being spent? That seems I just, odd. I just answered it. What do you mean? I just answered your question. You said you wouldn't answer about Las Vegas. You asked me a question and I responded. We can't dance together at this time, at this moment. This is going to be Black History Month, right? Y'all all say Martin Luther King had a dream. But guess what? I am the dream. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet. Yeah. Black History Month. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet. Black History Month. Oh, of course I'm going to give away a million dollars to help you pay your mortgage and your rent. Of course I am. The mayor. Not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. We getting scrutinized in the media. For what? Loving on the people, showing them that they matter to us. We going through the fires for y'all. It's Black History Month. As the first African-American female mayor of Dawson, of course I'm misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all self. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman. That's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all. Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise. And today we're discussing the super mayor, Tiffany Henyard, mayor of Dalton, Illinois. I have a special guest joining the channel today, Miss Celeste Duffy, the author of The Ass Backwards Way to Move Forward. You can also follow her on YouTube at Celeste underscore Duffy. Before we get into the video, we must have a word from our sponsor, Young G's Barbecue Sauce. Young G's Barbecue Sauce. Thank you, America. That's right. Get you some Young G's Barbecue Sauce today. Link down in the description box below. Support a service disabled veteran owned organization. Not only is this barbecue sauce good, it is good for you low in sodium, gluten-free, and absolutely no high fructose corn syrup. Now let's get into the video. Well, investigation is underway tonight into the Dalton mayor's spending habits. And the Illinois Attorney General is telling Mayor Tiffany Henyard to stop improperly soliciting donations. CBS2 investigator Megan Hickey has the latest on the mounting criticism against the village's embattled mayor. Sources here in Dalton tell us they've already been interviewed by the FBI and they've already been in touch with the Cook County State's Attorney's Office concerning the mayor's spending, including lavish personal spending reportedly on the taxpayer's dime. We are in dire need of transparency. Dalton trustee Brittany Norwood is one of four trustees who held a special meeting Thursday and passed a resolution calling for an outside investigation into Mayor Tiffany Henyard. Of course I'm the youngest female mm -hmm. mayor now. Of course I am. Norwood says they already have some proof she's misusing village funds and adding to Dalton's multi-million dollar deficit. She says the board has repeatedly asked for recent financial documents and been denied. The last time we received the bank statement was in September of last year, and we were $7 million in debt at that time. So at this current moment, we're saying, hey, where are the bank statements so that we can know where we are. The trustees say they want to see all of the documentation surrounding Henyard spending, including self-promoting taxpayer-funded billboards and other ads. They also question spending on lavish trips and extravagant dinners. Fine dining, um, all of this travel, and we're saying, hey, why are we going to these places? Um, what's happening here? In addition to the spending, investigators have also probed Henyard's charity, the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation, for improperly soliciting donations. On Wednesday, the Attorney General's office sent a cease and desist letter to the charity, warning that they'd already sent several letters to the charity because they were not registered with the state. Yes. We reached out to Mayor Henyard for comment and received a statement instead from Dalton's village administrator. The response did not address the AG cease and desist letter, but called the resolution from Dalton trustees to investigate the mayor's spending a circus. This is just another example of a few trustees in the village of Dalton spreading lies and false allegations, the statement read in part. Norwood said the meeting held at Dalton Park because they were locked out of Village Hall. They put out mailboxes outside, so... ...was their only option. We're going to continue um, to, to fight for transparency. We're going to continue to ask for transparency. 
Hey, Celeste, how you doing today? Oh, I'm glad to be with you, Wise. Thank you for having me. All right. You're welcome. Man, this lady, every time I see her and I watch clips, she makes me cringe every time. It never gets old. It never gets old. So let's, I'm going to let you kick this off, man. What are, you, what are your thoughts on the super mayor, Mayor Tiffany Hendrick? Um, I just say God bless the the, the people of, of Dalton. And you know what this is? You know, there's a lot of conversation right now uh, going on in the country about ageism and are people too old to serve and too old to govern? Uh, with Sometimes with age comes wisdom and some practice at responsibility. Um, I heard it said, and I think it's uh, sort of appropriate and apropos here, that um, she is like someone who uh, is the first time having a bank account and um, has not quite learned how to balance a checkbook. She is treating the city uh, as as her training ground for how to learn how to learn how to balance a checkbook, and it's probably very likely that not only has she not is not able to balance her own personal uh, checkbook, but she certainly can't balance the public checkbook. And that's a very disturbing fact. But what's worse than um, maybe just innocence that can come with youth and um, being overwhelmed by a responsibility seems as if that she has an attitude of sort of blatant corruption that um, would be you would think would be odd for someone so, so young and inexperienced to be so blatantly uh, corrupt is is very disturbing, and I think um, that we should be very happy. And 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 the people uh, in the Midwest, you know, there's going on in the country uh, a flight to quality. People are leaving places that are not well run and moving to places that they believe are far better run. So it's a good thing that she has put the billboards up on the highway so that folks who are fleeing. Uh, to go live someplace uh, where there's a higher quality of life, no, not to stop in Dalton, because Dalton is not the place where you would flee to high quality. I would agree with that. And I'm going to say this. The sisterhood this year has been a complete disappointment. And when I say the sisterhood, I mean the sisterhood that's in leadership. I love my Black women. I do. But what we're seeing in these positions of leadership from the sisterhood, it's such a disappointment. From Fannie Willis to Cori Bush to Tiffany Henyard, the list goes on. The mainstream media talking heads such as Joy Reid and Abby Phillips, it's just such a disappointment. These are the people that told us, if you put us in charge, things will be better because Black women are the backbone of the Black community. It's, what we're seeing is just a complete disappointment. And to be honest with you, they're definitely not better, but I would almost challenge and say that they're worse. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, uh, the the Bible says that you will know you know a tree by its fruit, and so the question is is not one of sentimentality. This is uh, an issue of something that can be measured. This is measurable, and so we can tell how well you're doing uh, because we can see your fruit. We can see if. Um, you are balancing a budget. We can see when there is less crime. We can see when um, services are coming on time and um, they're they're appropriately fulfilled. Uh, there are very measurable ways of figuring out how she put it up. Black women in power um, is doing. But what's really disturbing about this when you talk about the sisterhood, and I am uh, a member of the sisterhood, I'm a lifelong <laughs> member of the sisterhood. The, the issue with the sisterhood, and this brings me back to um, something the late, great uh, Kevin Samuels brought up, which, which is there's a real problem when Black women are in a position and feel as if they cannot be criticized, they can't be looked at, there can be no analysis of them. It, it, it's very dangerous to have people in positions of power who have absolute autonomy from any level of scrutiny. And I think it is unfair for Black women who are in these positions, if that is in fact what they are asking us for, and it is foolish on our part to deliver that. No one deserves with our money, our resources, we are the citizen, we are the sovereigns. You don't get the right to be in a position 
uh, that can tell me I can have no scrutiny, no scrutiny over how well you're doing and not be able to correctly uh, provide any kind of analysis or critique or look at. That is, that is a very foolish position to be in. And the only way you can sell that to people is if people have a wrong understanding, a misguided understanding of their actual relationship with those who govern them. And they think that they are in fact the employee and the person who governs them is the employer. Well, that is twisted. That is absolutely twisted. In fact, there's a mind shift that needs to happen because who you actually are is you are the sovereign. You are the employer and the people who govern you are the employee and you have a right to look at your employees and have some say about their performance. And when they're not performing well, you as the employer have a right to take action on behalf of your company. Absolutely. When you look at the commission there in Dalton, it looks like a lot of the, I guess the board of trustees, majority of them are black people, men and women holding this black woman accountable. So in the clip there, she said, y'all black, y'all black. I'm the mayor and I'm a black woman basically saying y'all black, I'm black. We supposed to be together. Y'all su not supposed to critique me. That's I just I don't subscribe to that at all. You are in a position of leadership, but you work for them. You work for the people. The people put you in that place. Now, this may, this lady is making two hundred and twenty four thousand dollars a year. I would I would assume that most people in that small town of Dalton, they're not making a fraction of the two hundred and twenty four thousand dollars that she's bringing in. Yet she's running around here acting like she's a monarch or a king when in all actuality, she's supposed to be there to serve the people. She's got things twisted. She does. And I, when she said what she said in the re in reference to I'm black, y'all black. In my mind, what crossed my mind is if those were white people in that commission or in, in those board of trustee positions, she would be, be calling them racist. She would be calling them racist for checking her behavior when she knows that her behavior has been found. Yeah, that that's a problem. And, and you're you're absolutely right about that. I don't know about this secret and complicit relationship that uh, apparently she thinks that uh, she has with other black people that entitles her to do whatever, say whatever, behave in whatever manner. Um, there, I saw a clip of her dressed as Wesley Snipes at a at a board meeting, and I guess she was putting on some kind of um, theatrical vignette to, <laughs> uh, for the board members. Like whatever her behavior is, that they are to accept uh, accept it because they're in some secret relationship where they can't speak out and they uh, have to be completely complicit to whatever she does. That that's crazy. But I will say this. The only reason she's allowed to believe that and to, to publicly stand and chastise them is that they must believe that as well, which is why they did vote for her and which is why they're in the situation they're in. Now, it does seem that there are a few of the trustees and uh, uh, some vendors and some other people in the town who are calling for independent investigations, who are calling for some, um, some auditing and some sunlight. Uh, to be shed on the situation there. And that's great. But th this idea we have, have afforded people or allowed people to believe that because we are black and we live in your town and that you know you are you are in, in a position of power and have some level of governance is, is we're supposed to be um, muted and, and muzzled and and, and and knuckled down. Well well my gosh. Uh, if that's the case, then we might as well roll the clock back a hundred years because that's that was the position we were in then. We didn't want to become free and, and take the shackles off ourselves so that you could shackle us back up and silence us again. No, black people are too free for that, too smart for that. And I think she pushed too far and it's going to come back to bite her. Wow. Well said. I think it's one of those situations where she thinks that black people are monolith and we are supposed to treat her as such and just go along to get along with whatever it is that she is doing but what she doesn't realize is is that those folks live in that community and whatever issues that they have going i think they said seven million dollars in debt she's taking trips going to high-end restaurants 
things of that nature, obviously buying designer gear, Gucci and, and Louis bags and all this other type of stuff. We see, I've seen the clips of that and then extorting small businesses <laughs> in, in her own community. I mean, she's bored. You might as well call her a gangster mm -hmm. the way she's acting. And then for her to go in in cosplay in a Halloween costume as Nino Brown, that right there should have put everybody on notice as to who she is and what type of person she is. See, I'm from Missouri. I'm from the show me state. I believe in watching people because your words don't believe words. Your actions will show us exactly who you are. So I hope the people of Dalton got enough of this because they voted based on this is a black woman. She's young. She's got some spunk, I would assume. And they voted on that because she said Martin Luther King had a dream. But she said, I am the dream, which lets you know that not only is she she's made the Kool-Aid, but she drinking it. It's ridiculous to me. And these are older black people that are in that board of trustees. And they are probably looking like, Lord, what have we done? We created a monster. I'm almost for certain they believe that we made a grave mistake by allowing this lady to run our city. They've made a grave mistake. And I believe prior to Tiffany Henyard, it was a white man that was the mayor, or, or I think there were white men that had been the mayor for years. And she gets in in one term and has racked up $7 million in debt. How does this happen? Again, the sisterhood has been taking some serious L's over the past couple of months, just this year alone. And it's really sad. Now, I will say this. I love my black women. I do. My mom is black, my sister, my wife. I do. But I just don't think that they've done a good job in these leadership roles, especially when you look at the black family. They're quick to say we've been the backbone of the black family. But when you actually go in and inspect the fruit of the black family, it's a lot of spoiled, rotten fruit, you know, in those baskets. When you look at what's going on, you look at the children that come from those environments. It's normally not a good situation. Matter of fact, so much so that a kid that grows up in that environment that is led by one of these single women, they're considered at-risk youth. They have a 70% 70, 70 chance of not graduating high school, going to prison, dying before the age of 18. It's, I mean, they're really at risk if you if you are grow up in that situation. It's really sad. So you look at the liberals, you look at the Democrats, people like Charlemagne the Fraud was like, yeah, I'm voting Joe Biden because he put a black woman on the ticket. And I'm like, anybody, I would tell, I was telling anybody that would listen, I was like, that just doesn't make any sense. Especially when you go and you look at her past. And you look at how she ran the DA office out in San Francisco and out there in California, how bad it was. And not only how bad it was, how bad it was for other black people in her district. It's really sad. And it it burns me up watching this lady because they're still they're still part of our community. And they just it to me, I feel like they're a representation of all of us and they just make us look bad. And then it makes us look like liars because. A lot of folks were saying, hey, if we can just get more black folks in positions of power, we can show what we can do. And then they get there and they're no better in some cases worse, you know, than some of the white folks that they were saying we need to get up out the way. It's really sad. Well, you know, you're you're absolutely right. And I think the issue here is is, is twofold. The first is when you have a population of voters who uh, do not believe or in this sort of secret complicit relationship where they're not allowed to publicly scrutinize, what that does is it never allows the community to actually consider the quality of the leadership they're getting. And because they can't consider the quality of the leadership they're getting, it is very likely that they have low quality leadership and are not going to be able to make a change because you have to be able to publicly have those kind of that kind of discourse and those kind of conversations. And black people deserve high quality leadership. And the way to have that is to have open vetted discussions about, like you said, the fruit that that is is bared. 
And I think it's very fitting, again, that she came as Nino Brown because she uh, is certainly treating Dalton as if it is the Carter. <laughs> so <laughs> he's running around Dalton like Nino Brown ran around the Carter. So I think that that's absolutely fitting. And the, the problem with that is there are many wonderful, talented, beautiful black women of all ages from all uh, from all places who are highly competent who probably can be wonderful leaders i'm just not sure that there are attractive candidates for these elites that want to create packs want to put you in power want to help finance you want to get you consultants all of the things that is required to run for these positions and to eventually obtain those positions have some backing and what i'm starting to think is the people who who are backing these people, they like these corrupt, foolish type people because they can hide behind them and particularly their black skin and they can enact their corruption and they can say, oh, but you can't criticize her. I don't care how much money you see flying out the window. Nobody can say anything because that's going to be considered anti-black. So people who want to be corrupt, people who are uh, duplicitous are very, I, I can see where there's a real advantage to get someone black into a position who either doesn't know better or doesn't care so that they can commit all the corruption they want to commit in, in privacy and in comfort and in relaxation because they have the shield of racism and the shield of, of, of gender uh, discrimination and the shield of blackness that they're hiding behind while they're behind the curtain doing whatever they wanna do. And from what we can see in this case, bankrupt in Dalton. I say, listen, somebody call Universal Circus and let them know this clown is ready to perform. Mm. Mm. With that being said, we'll wrap the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop us a comment down below. We we'll appreciate all the love and support. Keep God first in your life. America first. And we'll catch up with you all next time. Peace.